Hello and welcome to Will You Press The Button? I think most of you are sort of familiar with the concept, or at least have seen it or heard of it somewhere before. I've seen Northern Lion do a video on it recently. I thought, oh, it looks cool. I'll do one myself. <laughs> and yeah, I think it might help you understand something about myself. I don't know, I just hope it'll be funny somehow. The first question, well, uh, let me explain the basic concept of it. You have a button, you get sort of usually an upside and a downside, and you have to sort of judge for yourself whether the uh, the upside is worth the downside. For example, the first question is you'll be, or the first option you get is you'll be the richest man in the world, but every door you pass through will be slammed on your fingers. Now, most of these questions have like sort of almost ways to cheese it, to say like to find weird loopholes that might just eliminate the downside. <laughs> um, this one, not that easily. I mean, obviously, you're the richest man in the world. You're just going to build a house that doesn't have doors. Or um, alternatively, what else could you do? You could have, hmm, I guess that kind of defeats the point uh, of the thing. Like, define a door. Like, if you have a sliding door and you keep your hands on your body and then the door slams on your fingers, I mean, that's not going to hurt much. It only hurts because your fingers get stuck in between the door and the wall on their own. The only problem you'll have is any time you want to go out. Uh, but then, then again, most, like thinking about it, most things you go to have sliding doors, like most things you have to go to. Then again, I say have to go to, I was thinking supermarkets and stuff like that, but you don't have to go to a supermarket when you're rich. You'll just get someone to bring the stuff to you. And other than that, I think you can do relatively fine without having to cross through any doors. So I'll press the button. And after you press the button, you see a percentage of how many people did and how many people didn't. Clearly, 57% of people didn't think that through. Now, um, but yeah, I think that's, this is a relatively easy press for me. Next question. You can live in whatever world you wish to live in, but you will die three days later. I mean, that's just a clear no. Mm. I'm thinking now. It depends on... Hmm. It says three days later. Now, a couple of factors here. How do you do how are three days defined in the world you wish to live in? Or is it just your human interpretation of what three days would be like? Because I could just imagine a world where three days is actually a very, very, very long time. I will not <laughs> I will not make these questions that complicated. I, I shouldn't do that, but I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you what I think about them. Uh, in this case, I will just assume it means a normal three days like they would be in the human world, in which case the answer is obviously not. Yeah. Huh, 28 people really hate their life, apparently. Okay. Because, I mean, three days is really, really short. I'd even say no to that if it was a year. Next question. You live in the world of your favorite book, movie, TV show, but once it ends, you cease to exist. Well, what do you mean once it ends? There's plenty of... Again, this is kind of like... Weird. <laughs> There's so many examples I'm thinking of right now where I'm like, how do you define it ending? And what, like, because you you then live in the world. And technically, I mean, that world never ends unless you live in an apocalypse, in a book with an apocalyptic setting, maybe. But other than that, the world will always continue. People will always read the books, watch the movies, watch the TV shows. If you want to define it by... The last page of the book happened. The book is over. 
that point in time is the end of that world. Then it depends on where you get put into the book. If you get put into the book at the start, or slash movie, TV show, if you get put in there at the start, like what about, you get, I mean, not really fitting in terms of favorite book, but think about the Bible. If you get put in there right at the start, you've got hundreds, thousands of years to live. So does that mean you're just, you're just immortal? Because it says once it ends, you cease to, I mean, technically your body or your corpse could still cease to exist. This is a very complicated question now that I'm thinking about it. I'm just going to say no. I don't really want to live in the... It, it's also very vague. Because what I'm thinking here is... People are thinking... Oh, I'm going to live in that world. Like the guy here said, Doctor Who. I haven't watched Doctor Who. But from my understanding of it, I think it's relatively similar to just the normal world. With a bit of supernatural elements mixed into it. But you, you'd obviously be just a random person in the background in that book, movie, TV show. So unless it's a fantasy world, your life probably wouldn't be all that different. And in a fantasy world, it, in like 99% of the fantasy worlds, you'll be much worse off than you are in real life. So I just don't really see the appeal. <laughs> like again, you'd, you'd either be in your real world where, well, there's no difference. There's probably, there's like other people maybe in it. Because technically the, the book, movie slash TV show characters will have to be in the world where they maybe aren't in the real world. But, and if it's a, fa as I said, if it's a fantasy show, you'll just be way worse off usually. So unless you just really like the concept of that world. Hmm. Now it's, it's it, yeah, it's definite no for me. Your music library is perfectly sorted, tagged, and covered, but you have to listen to One Direction at least once per day. This doesn't really have a downside. One Direction's alright. And once per day. I mean, that's like three minutes. That's nothing. On the other hand, your music library is perfectly sorted, tagged, and covered. I don't really have a music library. I just bookmark YouTube like songs on YouTube and have them in my bookmarks and I'll usually only listen to like the last 15 bookmarks anyway because then I'll get bored of the songs and eventually like once every three years I'll go back through very old bookmarks and listen to songs again I don't really I mean I guess I'll, I'll press the button it's perfectly sorted tagged and covered sure yeah EA becomes a good company, but video game prices rise to $80. No. Uh, you have claws and a skeleton like Wolverine, but you can't control when your claws come out or go back in. Why would I want claws and a skeleton like Wolverine? That's just basically saying you just get <laughs> you'll just get caught by the police and get put in a solitary cell. Or get experimented on. Like, that's a clear no. Yeah, 67% of people agree. You become the Emperor of Earth, ruling over the entire human race, but other spacefaring civilizations, many of them hostile, discover Earth and will try to conquer the planet. Uh, that'd be really stressful. So, no. I don't really, like, even without the downside, I don't really want to become the Emperor of Earth, ruling over the entire human race. That sounds awful. No. You will become internet famous, but you will have the most annoying fan base ever. Hell no. 51%? Okay. All right. You raise $200,000 for the protection of wild animals, but the way the money is spent is decided by Peter. Hmm. That depends on where the $200,000 are coming from. If the two hundred thousand people, uh, the two hundred thousand dollars are coming from people who really want their money to be well, well used, and really help 
the protection of wild animals? Then no, but if the $200,000 just appear out of thin air, might as well let Peter spend them. A bit of it is going to go into the right hands. I guess. Okay. You could cook perfect meals, but you would be allergic to chocolate, ice cream, sugar, and fruits. The thing is, I don't really like chocolate that much. I don't like ice cream. But sugar and fruits... Mmm. The thing is, sugar is in so many different things. Like, even if you just say, well, you can't eat sweets anymore that are in sugar, like, that have sugar in them, but... There's so many other things that have sugar in them that aren't sweets. I mean, you could just ignore fruits. Like, doesn't every fruit have some level of sugar in it? I struggle to think of a fruit that uh, that doesn't. And fruits are good, but... Perfect meals. Uh, A... Okay, I feel I feel like I'll take it. I could definitely live without chocolate or ice cream. And again, chocolate always has sugar in it, doesn't it? Like, not all the chocolates. There are some chocolates that don't, but like 99.9% have sugar in it. And I don't like bitter chocolate anyway. So, hmm. Yeah, I, I'd take it. I'd miss some fruits, but other than that, I'll be fine. Ooh, 70% said no. You will invent time travel, but people will use it to go back in time and make sure this button is never pressed. Well, this is kind of a pointless question to think about then. Because, think about it, what does that mean? I mean, this just creates a paradox. So I, I will not even think about it. I, this is not a, I will not press the button, but this isn't this question is just not a thing. <laughs> Ignore this question. You have your own TV show, but you have to use it for education of some kind and don't get paid for having it. No. Why would I want a TV show then? What's the point? Like the the education isn't the part that I'm I've got a problem with here. It's the not getting paid for having it. That's the problem to me. I'll, I'll gladly have a TV show you and use it for education if I get paid for it. I'd love to do that. But not getting paid... So ba- basically, I'm assuming that means you have to at least have some level of preparation for it to sort of have your own TV show. I'm taking this as you need to at least... <laughs> Have a basic level of education in here. So let's let's say you... Prep- it also doesn't say... How, to be fair, it doesn't say how often that TV show would be running. If it's a once a year show... Maybe. But I'm going to assume it's a weekly show. At which point... I'll say... Probably about 10 hours of your week go into making that show. And that would just basically be 10 hours of your week gone for a show you don't really want to do and you don't get any money for it. So you still need a job. Then again, having your own TV show could get you jobs. But then again, you'd need to put the effort into it. I feel like I don't really want to do that now. And 61% of people agree. You can teleport anywhere in the world, but every time you teleport, you must walk down a long hallway full of creepy clowns that grope you. <laughs> um, I don't like clowns. It's not, the, not that I'm scared of them or anything like that, but I just I don't like them. I don't see the point. Hmm. That grope you. I don't really care about that, but must walk down a long hallway full of creepy clowns. I mean, as long as groping is the only thing they'll do, who cares? But... Mm. 
Yeah, still. I've, Northern Lion said this as well. Like, There's no reason to not press this button. If you don't want to do it, then just don't teleport. But you still have the ability to do so. So sure, definitely, I'll press the button. You're the smartest person, and by just touching a book, you soak up all the information, but you're se severely, not severely ugly, just severally ugly and depressed. Uh, no. <laughs> ugly isn't the point. I don't, I don't care. But depressed, severely depressed? No, thank you. Uh, you gain, like, what's the point of knowing all this information? There's no point to it if you're just going to be depressed. You gain the ability to make anyone do what you want just by giving verbal commands. But no one will love you because of your power. Uh, no. Anyone do what you want. Hmm. Make anyone do what you want. Yeah, though, I, I think I might. I think I might press that button. Mm, kind of depends a bit. Like, what exactly does it mean that no one will love you? How exactly do you define that? Because you'd still, you'd still be able to have friends. Friends don't need to love you. They like you. In most cases. Mm, yeah. I think I'd press that button. Ooh, yeah, that's a close one. I can definitely see how that would be close. You get to travel to any fictional universes however long as you please and can return to Earth and travel to a different universe. But you can only travel with one other human of your choice and you can only interact with each other on Earth for the rest of your lives. Huh? You may travel with one other human of your choice and you can only have to be each other on Earth for the rest of your life. What do you mean? <laughs> what, what, what is this question trying to say? You can only travel with one other human of your choice. That basically means I get this ability. Someone else gets this ability. Someone else of my choosing. And that's it. If we're in another world, we can't interact with each other. That's, that's it. Yeah, of course I'll press that button. There's no downside to this. You become very charismatic. Everyone will like you, but you will become severely unhappy because inside you'll just be an empty shell. Well, again, no. <laughs> no, what's the point? World hunger will disappear and poverty will be a thing of the past, but everyone has to give up cars, big houses, fast food, and Walmart. Well, I don't care about Walmart. I don't care about fast food. Big houses. Give up cars. Yeah, well, I guess. Yeah, sure. No, I, I shouldn't be thinking about this for so long. World hunger will disappear and poverty will be a thing of the past. Yep, pressing the button. 37% of the people... Hmm. <laughs> okay. The cure to the zombie virus is within you, but to harvest it, you'll die in the process. Zombies don't exist, so that's an easy no. <laughs> if it said something that's actually real, I might have to think about it, but it didn't. You gain the ability to create a fully functional copy of yourself, but your copy will try to kill you. I mentioned this before about how if you don't want to activate the ability, then just don't. But why would I, why would I want to do that? <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> no. <laughs> this, this needs to have like an upside as well. Like I'm talking a lot about these, these questions having no downside, but this had no upside. You will become a Pokemon trainer, but you will lose all your memories. No. What, what? No. No. Uh, what's the name? You have your dream body, but getting someone to like you will be twice as hard. 
<laughs> to be fair, that's the first thing I thought about as well. Uh, I mean, it doesn't work like that. Because getting someone to like you will be twice as hard. This is basically the opposite. This would imply that everyone likes you anyway. Getting someone to like you is, like, guaranteed. This is the opposite. That's like multiplying a million by two. You have your dream body. I mean... Uh, well, the question is, will you keep your dream body? A lot of a lot of the problems that come with getting a dream body come with maintaining it. Obviously, it's easier to stay in shape if you are already in shape. But... Hmm. No. I think I won't. No. Hmm. You have an <laughs> infinite supply of weed. No. I, no. <laughs> you gain all the riches of the world, but everyone openly hates you, refuses to speak to you, and you constantly run the risk of... No. That's basically going back to a couple of the questions before. You get free wishes, but you cannot wish for more wishes, and no matter what, you will die when you turn 50. Um, this, these, question, these questions don't work. Because there's, like, <laughs> no matter what, you will die when you turn 50. Well, I wish for time to part. Like, I wish for... There's a lot of wishes you can do to get out of that. I wish I'll stay forever... 24. There. I'll never turn 50. There you go. Sure, I'll press that button. You'll always be the ideal weight. Off. No. That's a clear no. Yeah, that, that comment said it best. I like food. When you die, you automatically return to a safe point which you can set. You bring your memories with you. You can't save before your last safe point and there is no reset. This will also not end for all of them. Uh -huh. Let me read through that again. Okay. You can't save before your last save point. There is no... Okay, so this basically means if you set a save point, this is the furthest, or furthest back you can go. You can't go before that. And every time you set a new save point, you can only move forward from there. That means... It would depend a lot on how to set a save point. Because that means as soon as you set a save point, after a time where you are terminally ill, you will be dying for all eternity. That is not nice. That means I probably, the only reasonable thing to do here is set a save point right when you get the ability to do so then not set a single other one until you die go back to that save point repeat everything exactly the way you did it the first time around until you reach your now known high in your life from a previous life, like from your previous life, the best point of it, or the point before you made a massive mistake, and then set a new save point there and run through the whole system again and again until you have basically created your ideal life that you then get to live over and over again. And at that point, you can put in variations. Obviously, Doing this, you could also get filthy rich because you know the developments of the stock market or any sort of lottery drawings. But stock market is probably better than lottery because lottery will make you famous in a way. The stock market won't do that. You're a lot more anonymous in the stock market. That way, you'd be rich. You could set a save point at the start of the best time of your life and you get to experiment around with it. Because worst, if worst comes to worst, 
Just throw yourself off a building, start again at the best point of your life. And if it actually turns out better, then you can maybe create a better safe point for next time. So, yes. This will not end for all time, but it's fine. Sure. Yeah. You, you'd go crazy eventually, for sure. But there might be a couple hundred years in it before then. And, well, I don't know. Once you... I mean, the thing is, it would be also kind of interesting to just... What happens if you inch... Like, if you edge your safe point closer and closer to the moment of your death. Imagine you get, I don't know, cancer. Or some other, like, you have a massive car crash that kills you. What if you can somewhat unconsciously set your safe point to be in, at the time you're in your in a coma, and you die after that? Meaning you will not be conscious at any point for the rest of eternity. Meaning it's basically, obviously I don't know what it's like to be in a coma, but I'd assume it's basically like dying for yourself. So, I think that's fine. Like, there's, there's not much of a downside to it at this point. But that was that was a great question. I like that a lot. You can eat any of your favorite free foods for the rest of your life without gaining weight, but eating any other food will kill you instantly. Now the question is how do you define food? Is food a meal? Is food just one ingredient? If I say I, I really like steak, for example, or I really like pizza, let's go with pizza is probably the easy example. Is it just a question of definition? Can I eat any sort of pizza? But not the toppings by themselves, because that would make no logical sense. Mm, I could think of ways that make sense, but, you know, ingredients like almost nullifying each other when they're on pizza. Um, you can eat any of your favorite free foods for the rest of your life. No. I feel like I wouldn't do that. No, no, I wouldn't. 60% of people agree. Mainly because, as I said, you'd be stuck with free food. I didn't say that. You'd be stuck with free foods. So you'd lose a lot of variety. There'd have to be a lot more definitions based on, as I've said, pizza. Like, does it count? Everything that could be defined as a pizza. What if I just take some chicken breast, put it on the pizza, and then eat that? Does that count as pizza? What if I take a steak, put it on pizza? <laughs> Can I just put everything I want on pizza and eat it? As long as I have, like, pizza dough? <laughs> yeah, that, that, that question needs to be better defined. You will have all the pie in existence, but no pizza. Oh, we're back to pizza. I don't particularly like pie, so no. No, I like pizza more, way more than pie. Uh, you get the ability to make anything you want a reality, but you'll be alone in a vast space of emptiness. Um, this doesn't work. <laughs> this, que this, this goes back to the questions before that just don't work. Because that's, that's a paradox. If I have the ability to make anything I want a reality... I can't simultaneously be alone in a vast space of emptiness. Because if I'm alone in a vast space of emptiness, that can't change based on a question. So I can't have the ability to make anything I want a reality because what I want to make a reality is not a vast space of emptiness. Therefore, this question doesn't work. Receive $1 million in cash, but never watch porn again for the rest of your life. Sure. Yep, that's fine. Uh, you can play every instrument perfectly, but you can't hear... No, 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 no. What's the point? Seriously, what? why would you press yes to that? Like, what, what's the point? No. What, what, are 70, what are 25 people trying to 
get by that? No, just no. Receive $5 million annually, but you cannot buy anything priced over $200. <sighs> no. Well, now, yeah, that, that's what I was thinking of. That just circumvents the question, though. Imagine you cannot get anyone else to buy your stuff. Then, then that's a clear no from me. How are you, how are you buying a computer? For if, if nothing's priced over, if you can't buy anything priced over two hundred dollars, yeah, there's some parts of the computer you buy, you can buy, without spending over two. But how are you buying a graphics card, for less than two hundred dollars? That's not happening. So no. End world hunger, but you will have to die of hunger. No. No. Uh. You are a spy that has stopped many villains from from either destroying or ruling Earth. But since you are a spy, your identity is a secret and no one will know of your bravery. And if you try to tell others, they won't believe you. Um, well, the question is... If I wasn't a spy and I hadn't stopped many villains from either destroying or ruling Earth, would anything change? Because the way this question is phrased, it wouldn't. There will probably be some other spy that had stopped these villains from destroying or ruling the Earth, because currently there is no one destroying or ruling the Earth. Not a single person, at least. So, this basically is a question of, do you want the self-satisfaction of knowing you were the person who saved the Earth? But at the cost of that, no one else knowing. To which I say, not really. 76 percent hmm interesting you get to back you get to go back i assume to any moment of time from your past but rec you can't return to the present assuming this is an ability that um is repeatable the answer to that question is yes definitely because, yeah, yeah, sure, definitely. I don't really have to think about that even. Easy. Like, even if you want to, like, use it in a very, like, um, how do you say this? Even if you don't want to just, say, go back 10 years, you can just go, like, again, spend a lot of money making, like, spend a lot of make a lot of money off the stock markets of anything else like that because you can just go two days in the past have a real portal gun but you have to carry it on your body for the rest of your life um what would i do with a portal gun is there any point anything i would want to do with a portal gun i guess i could just walk like almost teleport in a way because I could just like have one portal next to me on the floor and have another portal like as far as I can see into the distance and then just go over there but having to carry it on your body for the rest of your life no that's not worth it that's just not worth it you can live in your dream house and live with your dream partner but you live with him her alone on a desert island and rains forever yeah <laughs> i yeah i mean i like rain rain is fucking great and um, sure yeah definitely i agree it's not much of a downside uh you get to live in the monster hunter universe but you will have to spend the rest of your life there and you can't bring anyone with you no i mean i've never played monster hunter um I've seen a bit of it. I don't think it, I'd like it personally. Um, so no. That's a pretty clear no. Uh, you can breathe underwater. But you can also smell underwater. Meaning you catch up with it. <laughs> hmm. Well that again that goes back to. It can't hurt to have the ability. 
having the ability to breathe underwater doesn't necessarily mean that you have to. You can still hold your breath. Yeah, of course. You get to live in a flat with your best friend and you go on an adventure nearly every day, but every partner you have thinks you're gay with your best friend and leaves you. Mm. <sighs> hmm. That's difficult. Yeah, I'd press the button. I think I would. <sighs> no. Jesus Christ, 40% of people. You have the ability to shapeshift into an animal of your choice, but once a day you randomly shapeshift and cannot control your actions. No. Mm, interesting, a 50-50. Hmm. No more poverty, hunger, injustice and inequality in the world for the next 100 years. The effect will begin after you will die and there's a 50% chance that no one will know that you pressed the button. Why would you not press the button? Seriously. 26% of people. What the fuck? You can have a marathon of your favorite TV show with the stars of said show, but you can never watch the show ever again. Oh, I assume this means have a marathon in the sense of actually watching the show, marathoning the show, not running a marathon alongside the members of the f your favorite TV show. Because I was going to say, I don't want to run a marathon. Um, you can never watch... I don't rewatch shows anyway. But at the same time, I don't really care about marathoning a favorite TV show with the stars of said show. I don't really care. <laughs> um... I guess not, no. It's not about that I really want to rewatch the show ever again, I just don't really care about that part. Everything in life will be free, everything, but you will see no value or purpose in anything. No, I wouldn't. Because I've, I've in the past, there's been a couple of games usually that I've just played and sort of um, set rules for myself where I could only do... S how do I explain this the best? Basically, you have a game and you play it normally. It provides us some sort of challenge. Achievements feel great because you actually did something for it. And then you start cheating and everything just feels pointless because... What's the point? Sure, I've won, but I've also cheated. I didn't really do anything to win that, so... I'm I'm talking solely about single-player games here, by the way. I've, I've never actually cheated in a multiplayer game, and I don't see the point of it. Um, And it, it's just... It sucks all fun out of it, so no. Uh, you have the ability to open dimensional rifts into random alternate realities due to the multiverse theory being proven true. You also may bring anything through, but you may not choose the alternate reality and the rift closes behind you as soon as you pass through. Nope, that's a pretty clear no. It's an, it's not a badly worded question, I just don't want to. <laughs> I think we'll do like a couple more. You and five people can travel to the moon and you can live there as you normally would on Earth. As soon as you get to the moon, you're stuck there for at least 10 years. Uh, I mean, that's fine. That's perfect. I don't really see why you wouldn't press that. Sure, you'd be stuck there for 10 years, but it says you can live there as you normally would on Earth. Basically meaning I can do anything I want. So sure. You can travel in time, but you cannot choose the year. No. Yeah, no. 
Your lifetime dream comes true, but you crush so you crush someone else's lifetime dream. Huh. Lifetime dreams get crushed every day. I feel like, you know, I'll base this purely on math. There's a much bigger percentage of people whose lifetime dreams don't come true than those whose come true. Meaning that me pressing this button doesn't add much misfortune percentage wise. So I'll press a button, sure. You get one free thing of your choice every day, but you lose something else. Um, do I get to choose what I lose? Because if one of the options is my life, then no. And it's phrased like it might be. If I get to choose what I lose, well, there, I have this pen. Give me a million dollars. But if I don't get to choose, then no. Unlimited wishes, but once a wish is made, it cannot be taken back. Mm. This doesn't really apply. Because you're technically... The thing is, technically, I'm male. I'd wish to become female. At which point, I wouldn't wish for my wish to be reverted. I would just wish to become male. That's not reversion of the wish. That's just another wish. That's to switch gender. So, sure. Again, poorly phrased, I think. You understand every language in the world, but you can't communicate in any of them. Mm, by the way, writing is communicating. That doesn't count. Um, hmm. No. No. Because that means I literally, I, I can't make a living. How would I make a living? I cannot communicate with other people. I'd basically be an animal pretty much. Because like the thing is, like usually even deaf and blind people, and I'm not talking about either or, I'm talking about both, can still communicate. I can't. That also means... Wait, how does that even work? Like, mimics is communication. I literally cannot even blink because that'd be communicating. Hmm. I'm just going to say no and I'll stop thinking about the question. All right. If this is a nice... If this is a nice question, that'll be the last one. Perpetual world peace, but humans can't reproduce naturally and are created as adults in labs. There will never be a child on er another child on Earth. Hmm. I mean, there doesn't really have to be children on Earth, but at the same time, if I'm assuming that life expectancy wouldn't increase, that would mean you live 18 years less. No, not really. And I think that's where we're going to end this. Let me know if you want me to continue on doing another video on this, if you liked it. Um, also, if there's anything uh, regarding any of the questions I answered where you thought, what are you saying? This is completely wrong. Or and like anything that you completely disagree with. Or even anything you, you fully agree with and thought, hmm, I didn't think of this before. Let me know in the comments. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.